Over 200 years ago, one of the greatest Englishmen who ever lived explored the Antipodes in this ship. The Endeavour was built in a Yorkshire port that nourished generations of explorers, and she was commanded by the greatest of them all, Captain James Cook. And this 22-foot model of the Endeavour was made at Whitby too, but it's on display in a very busy shopping centre, just 35 miles away, but at the other end of the most beautiful moorland valley, and today we can explore that same Esk Valley in comfort all the way to Whitby by rail. I know there are three Esks in Britain, but this one surely has to be the prettiest of them all. Running down to the sea between the Cleveland Hills and the North York Moors, it has a concentration of plant and wildlife that's hard to beat. And that's not to mention its history. And of course, this esk is the only salmon river in York. The railway is the proper way to see Eskdale too, because Britain's railway started close to here some 150 years ago. No, we haven't suddenly been picked up and transported to the South Seas. In fact, we're just one stop down the line and still in Middlesbrough. But these are the sort of plants that the botanists on Captain Cook's expedition, and they always had a botanist on such expeditions, used to collect and send back. Like the hibiscus. And Brunsfelsia, the plant that the South Africans call yesterday, today and tomorrow. And the calistemon, the bottle brush, one of the most famous of Australian plants. Or the Norfolk Island pine, a piece of vegetable geometry, if ever there was one. And this is the conservatory at the Captain Cook Birthplace Museum in the Stewart Park at Martin. And it's the village where Cook was born and where you'll learn a great deal more about his adventures. But then, we've got some exploring to do ourselves. Rosebury topping this, and it's the nearest thing you're going to get to mountaineering on this trip. But don't miss it, whatever you do, it's a thousand feet above sea level. And you lift your eyes and look at that view. If anyone can show me anything more panoramic than that, then I'll climb 2,000 feet to look at it. All this used to be forest back before the Bronze Age. But men cut the trees down to build and to heat the home. And then they put sheep on the moon. So this country, like most of England, is really man-made. But it's still a beautiful sight, isn't it? You might even see castles up here if you're lucky. And it really is hard to leave, but let's get back on the train.
this isn't one of your high-speed intercity lines. In fact, here at Battersby Junction, you'll travel backwards in time as you reverse out of the station. And then watch how the driver clears his train onto the single track by exchanging a special disc. Without that, the points can't be switched and the single track can't take two trains. Signal women share the duties here with the men. They tell me it's known locally as the petticoat line. It's also the youngsters line, because hundreds of children take the train to school every day and then come safe home again. So this little line is really more than just a railway track. It's a lifeline too. Without it, the Esk Valley would be a lonelier, less active part of Cleveland. Or Cleveland, by the way, that means hilly district or cliff country. Halfway along the Esk line at the heart of the North York Moors, you'll find young explorers at the National Park Centre. It's in a village that was named by the Danish invaders, Danby. You can see how the Moors took shape here and how the dedicated people, the landowners, the farmers and the team here at Danby Lodge worked so hard to keep all 550 square miles of the North York Moors National Park vibrant and still alive because people are making the living from the land still so that visitors from all over the world can come and breathe of the air and share the pleasures that you can find up here on the moors If you walked up from Danby to Lealholm, that means the village amongst the twigs, you'll be ready for a break and a snack on the village green or even a paddle in the esk by these ancient stepping stones. Well, that's got to be refreshing to the mind and the feet. The Beggar's Bridge here in Glaisdale is worth anybody's time to stop and enjoy. It was built in 1619, says so here on the stone. And it was actually constructed as a result of star-crossed love. Because 350 years ago, a certain Thomas Ferrens was courting the squire's daughter on that side of the river and of course there was no bridge, he had to wade across. But anyway, the squire discovered what was going on and sent young Thomas about his business and the lad, being the lad he was, took off and made his fortune, came back home again and married the squire's daughter and then constructed the bridge of all things to save other poor beggars getting their feet wet having to cross the river. Now, how's that for a romantic story? And there are dozens more like it up and down the Esk, all woven into the rich tapestry of legend.
All along the Esk Valley these days, you'll see the bright blue of new pacer trains. There's something to see at every stop on the line. I look for the welcome board at each station to give me local walks and wildlife haunts, as well as news about local flower shows. And they're big news around here, especially in August with agricultural and flower shows right down the line. No, they're not exhibits at some local flower show. They're just part of the floral display that makes the Esk Valley a wild garden from spring right through into autumn. It's just as if some giant had grabbed handfuls of seed and scattered them into all the wayside nooks and corners. And in that way, it's better than a garden because the setting is so magnificent. When the first North York Moors Railway opened from Gromont to Pickering over 150 years ago, there were no steam trains. It was horses that pulled the carriages along the rails for 11 years until the first steam loco appeared. You can still travel by steam train. Just step off the Eskdale diesel and you step into the fast. And that's for an 18 mile journey by steam over the moors to Gorthland and Pickering. And that has to be an experience, believe me. This is the line for the real rail enthusiast. From the footplate to the loco shed. And souvenir shops. It's all that. Meanwhile, back on the Esk line, we've come to the salmon leap that symbolizes somehow the vibrant life and the seasons of the river. And this is Slight, one of the prettiest villages in the north of England, and all built on a near vertical hillside above the bubbling Esk. Henry VIII actually came here, and Rudyard Kipling. When Kipling asked, oh, where are you going to? All you big steamers with England's own coal, up and down the salt sea. I really don't suppose he had this size of steamer in mind. But it's a little gem, the golden plover out of Russet.
And look how the twisting, tumbling esk has spread itself into this broad expanse as it nears the sea. Thirty-five miles we've travelled through the magic valley of the Esk, and now we arrive at a treasure chest of a town. Welcome to Whitby. It's a port rich in history. It's a place of legend. It's an absolute jewel of a town in a lovely setting. Here Cook ships were built the handmade timber vessels that took him twice round the world. And a full-sized replica of the endeavor is about to be built here again. What a magnet for adventure lovers from all over the world. Here the whales were landed, and it was in fact oil from the whales that they used to fuel the street lamps. And this, well that's the jawbone of a whale, and it was erected on this site something like 150 years ago. Even the inside of St Mary's Church on the cliff top by the abbey is designed like a ship with a three-storey pulpit. And it was on a seat looking out to sea here that Bram Stoker dreamed up his classic story, Dracula. There's a tourist trail that takes you all round the Count's ghastly legacy. find bands playing in the narrow streets and on the pier. Whitby Jet. And that's the material that's been used for making jewellery from Bronze Age right up to the time of Queen Victoria. And what's more? You can still buy that jewellery in gift shops in Whitby now. But do you know what this ebony-like substance is? It's wood washed out of the sea and fossilised by salt water and pressure. In the Middle Ages they considered it a charm against witchcraft. True? Well, I don't know. But stories have grown up for centuries and they make life the richer for it. In fact, it was here on Whitby Beach that Lewis Carroll wrote The Walrus and the Carpenter. And now it's time, regretfully, for me to walk a little faster too. I hope you enjoy esk exploring for yourself one day soon and get as much pleasure from it as I've enjoyed from discovering Eskdale by rail, one of Britain's great local lines.